Hello there, this is Xiao, and welcome to the second video in my two-part mini-series on basic vocal recording and mixing. This is a basic guide to producing vocal recordings, designed for people who are new to the world of making audio, or for those who are on a strict budget. In my last video, I discussed the equipment and software needed for recording, how to set it up, and how to record and import audio. If you haven't already seen that video, please go do so. Today, I'll be returning to Audacity to show you how you can improve your audio quality after you've made your recordings. So let's get started. Audio editing. So you've just recorded your first audio, and you're fairly happy with the result. My favorite kinds of pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, but as you can see in here, it's not amazing. There's quite a few gaps and pauses in the audio. It's pretty quiet. The volume levels aren't very consistent. Like there's some inconsistencies here and there, and there are other issues. Simply put, it needs a little bit of work. So here's what you can do to fix it. Now, before I begin, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Audacity. Because of how it applies its audio effects, the order in which you apply them is very important. Further, if you make a mistake in one of these steps, you have to undo all your work and restart from the point where you left off. So basically, if you have applied three effects, say a compressor, an EQ, and a limiter, just as an example, and you wanted to change the compressor, you would have to undo the EQ and the limiter in order for you to be able to go back and edit the compressor. Indeed, you would have to undo all three of them. So make sure you're happy with the changes you've made before moving on to the next step. Also, remember to save your project often, as Audacity is prone to crashing, especially when working with large audio files. So, let's begin. We have our file here. The first thing we want to do is normalize the audio. As I mentioned in the previous video, you'll want to have recorded at a lower volume level to avoid clipping distortion. But, this leaves you with quiet audio. Normalization fixes this issue by turning up the audio file's volume until the loudest point, I believe that would be about here, reaches a given value. First you want to select all your audio. An easy way to do this is with Control A, and then you go into Effect, and you go down to Normalization. Normalize, right here. You can just leave the defaults as they are right now. You really don't need to mess around with them. So you push OK, and voila! Your audio is now magically a lot louder. Next, you can see that this increase in volume also added, it made a lot more background noise visible. You can't hear it all that well, but it is there, and if you're going to be applying additional effects later on, this background noise could cause problems. So it's a good idea to remove it. To remove background noise, you highlight an area of just noise using the selection tool here. It's important to note that when you're making your selection, be sure you're selecting just noise, not any of this other audio here, because that could screw up the noise profile. Speaking of which, go down to Effect, Noise Removal, and select Get Noise Profile. This captures a, the frequency information of the selected audio and uses it to create, uses it to inform the noise removal tool. Then you select everything, again using Control A, you go down to Noise Removal again, and then you use this section down here. The default settings should be good for most purposes, so just click OK, and the background noise should be gone, or at least should be much quieter. As you can see, there isn't a whole lot of noise anymore. Now we'll work on editing the audio file itself to get rid of any unwanted noises, bad takes, and slip-ups. So you use the selection tool to highlight the region of audio that you want to remove. Then click the cut button, this button here, or just push the delete key. I'll use the cut button for this example. As you can see, it removes the portion of the audio and moves the rest of the audio file forward. This can be useful. However, you, it's not applicable to all situations. Here's an example of me using the delete key. But let's say we wanted to keep this space here, and we wanted to remove this sound here. Instead of using the cut button, you would use the silence audio button up here. Voila, now it is quiet. So you would continue going through the entire audio file 
and cutting using the uh, the cut using the cut button and the silence audio button to clean up your file, remove long areas of silence, bits of the audio you don't want, etc., etc. This can take a while, but it makes a huge difference in how professional you sound. Okay, so we'll delete that bit. Now that our audio is cropped down to size and edited the way we want, we will clean up the actual tone of the audio signal using an equalizer. In the effects menu, select equalization. And this gives you a blank equalizer. From the select curve drop down menu, you choose 100 Hz rumble. Then put a small minus 3 dB dip at around 400 Hz. To add points, you just simply click on the line and then you add you click then that adds a point adds a control point and you click down here to produce the, your dip now you some audio may sound better with the dip being at 500 hertz or 300 hertz play around with it and use the preview button to see whether it sounds good to you i'm just going to leave it as is for now and press okay this change should remove any low pitched rumbles or thumps and will clean up any sort of low end muddiness in your audio so let's give it a listen just to see where we're at. My favorite kinds of pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. Sounds pretty good so far. Next we'll deal with any uneven volume levels in the file. As you can see in the example, some words are a bit quieter than others. You could go through and manually turn up these words if they're too quiet, but we can do this automatically using a tool called a compressor. So you go into the effect menu and select the compressor. Set the attack time parameter to 0.1 seconds, which is about as which is as low as it'll go, and set the threshold to minus 30. Leave the other settings as they are and click OK. The volume levels should be a bit more consistent now. If you needed a bit heavier compression, you would go in and turn down the threshold even further. If the, if the compressor starts to sound weird because you've applied so much compression, you would turn the threshold up. Finally, we will guarantee that our audio does not clip by applying a limiter. Open the effect menu and select Hard Limiter. If you don't have this plugin, the Audacity website should have it in their list of downloads. So here's the Hard Limiter. And yes, the plugin is much larger than it needs to be. With the limiter open, set the dB limit to minus 0.1. If you want to be more careful, you can set it to minus 0.5 or even minus 1.1, but generally minus 0.1 is enough. When you're, ha when you're done, click OK, and any peaks that were at or above the 0 dB limit should be brought down a tad. Our sample audio wasn't very close, so you probably didn't notice much of a change. Anyway, our audio should now be ready to go. So let's give it a quick listen. My favorite kinds of pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. Good consistent volume levels, relatively clean tonal quality, and no weird pauses or gaps. I think it's pretty much ready to go. The last thing we have to do is export the file. So we go to the file menu and select export audio. If you're going to be putting this file in a video, export it as a WAV if you're on Windows or an AIFF if you're on Mac. If your audio file will be uploaded to the internet by itself, export it as an MP3. However, bear in mind that if you want to do an MP3 through Audacity, you need to download Audacity's third-party MP3 encoder. You can find more information on this on Audacity's website. Additional considerations. I've just shown you a basic template for how to clean up audio and make it sound halfway decent. But I'll say this right now. It won't be perfect. The instructions in this video will probably only give good results some of the time for certain applications. Why? Simple. I don't know your source audio. I don't know what you sound like, what mic you're using, what room you're recording in, or what you're trying to do with your recording. At best, you'll get pretty good results if you have a voice like mine, are recording in a bedroom with a Samson C01U, and are recording for something like a spoken analysis video or a dramatic reading. However, my suggestions could be wildly off the mark, and could even make your audio sound worse. In order for you to get consistent good results that are appropriate for what you are trying to do, you need to know more. You need to know what kind of microphone works best for your needs. 
what recording environment yields the best results, how to custom set the parameters on a compressor or an equalizer to fit your voice, how to mix a vocal so that it sounds good in the context of an entire song instead of just by itself. Well, fortunately for you, I can show you all these things. In the next several tutorials, I will be going into much more detail about how to take your vocals to the next level. Some things I'll be covering will be performance tips, microphone choice and mic accessories, monitoring your recordings as they're made, mixing vocals in the context of music, and much more. If you're interested in making professional, awesome sounding vocal recordings like me, stick around for my series on getting a great vocal sound. Anyway, that about wraps up this mini-series on basic vocal recording and mixing. If you liked what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions about what I've talked about here, comment below. I'm always open for questions. And if you want to request a VoxFX tutorial, please send me a message. Remember, if it's talky, I can talk about it. In the next tutorial, I'll discuss the number one rule of vocal performance. Until then, have fun and keep making sound. VoxFX. Yeah. <laughs>